Well, it doesn't get much better than this, sitting on the sofa with Sir Peter Blake. Thank you. <laughs> you were signing somebody's leg just a moment ago. What was all that about? He had a half-finished tattoo on his leg from the Stanley Road album, and he wanted me to sign it, and he was rushing straight off to have it tattooed, have the signature tattooed. That's a bit of a tribute, isn't it? I've signed other bits before, but I've never signed a leg. What other there. bits have you signed? I've signed kind of chests. We can't let you go without mentioning Sergeant Pepper. I gather everybody in the world asks you about that. Do you look back on it now with affection, or has it become a bit of a, a millstone round your neck? It's both. I read in the paper just last week about a, another album, and it said you know, it's second only to Sergeant Pepper. Andy Warhol's um, album for, for something. And so I've got to be excited. You know, I've got to be pleased with that. You've designed many other covers. Yeah. And the 60s of, and the 70s, of course, was a very special time, particularly for album covers. I mean, do you regret their passing now that we're, you know, CDs? Well, oddly enough, most of the CDs I've done have also been done as LPs. So I always design still to the LP format. So they're usually limited editions. But the Oasis was an LP. And I've just done a cover for the Blockheads, you know, Ian Dury's band, and that will be an LP. So I tend to just to ignore the fact that there are no LPs, and I design LPs still. And I play LPs the whole time. As far as I'm concerned, they still exist. But what's your current work? What are you working on at the moment? Is it still music? Yeah, well, I've just finished the Blockheads cover. I'm doing more print. I'm painting Brian Wilson at the moment. You know, not, not from life, but I'm doing a portrait of Brian Wilson. I just painted Ricky Hatton, the boxer, that's going to be sold for sports relief. I'm working hard, doing a lot of work around the subject of the alphabet. So I'm doing lots of things around that subject. Nobody can fail to be aware of Damien Hurst's good fortune, if you like. Ooh. What do you think about that? Is it a good investment at the moment? I've been a friend of Damien since 1990 and a, and a great supporter of him, and I still am. But there are all kinds of levels of things going on. I mean, the whole auction might well have been about the fact that what happens if you put work up for sale and people buy it. So, so it becomes a concept. It's about whether people would then buy them, and they did. I mean, it's not about making money. I, I think Damien, if he lost everything tomorrow, would carry on. He'd go out and find some rubbish and make a collage. But it's about the phenomena of money. And he's quite a good publicist, self-publicist, isn't he? Well, he? Yeah, he's a showman. But he employs over 100 people and pays them well. He gave at least three million away straight away to charity. He's a good man. I'm sorry, I have to go back to Sergeant Pepper. Final question. When you presented the cover to the band or to the band's record company, what was their reaction? Not good. I mean, um, Brian Epstein said, for God's sake, let's stop this nonsense, put it out in the brown paper envelope. You know, let, we can't go on. And Joseph Lockwood was very nervous about it, would have said, you can't do this, but the Beatles were so big then, they just said, yes, we can. You know, I mean, they were at the peak, so we could do pretty much whatever they wanted to do, you know. And they were thrilled with it? I think so, yeah.